Hi all, this is Larry Feldman with a lesson on 30-60-90 triangles. 30-60-90 uh, triangles are a very important class of right triangles covered in geometry and trigonometry. And we start the lesson with an equilateral triangle, which I've already drawn to uh, spare you the boredom of watching me create it. But um, on the screen you see uh, equilateral triangle ABC and it's equilateral because uh, the sides are congruent and the angles are congruent. The angles are each 60 degrees because as I said they are equal by definition and the angles in any triangle must sum up to 180. Now I'm going to uh, do something that may seem uh, a little random but I'm going to label the length of each side 2x and I will explain why I choose 2x shortly. And then what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate this triangle on the right at, as closely as possible so that we can uh, keep marking it up while still uh, having it somewhat legible. So here is a uh, a rough copy of the triangle that's on the left and let me just uh, put in the vertices again we have A, B, and C and I'm going to label the uh, sides again 2x and 2x I'm going to leave the bottom one unlabeled at this stage because I want to drop a median from vertex A to the opposite side. And if you recall, a median connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's label the midpoint D. So this point is D. And since it's the midpoint, we know that BD is equal to CD. Another way of wording that is segment BD is congruent to segment CD. And if that is the case, this must be length X and this must be X because we know from the triangle on the left that the uh, distance between B and C is 2X. Therefore, since D is the midpoint, each of these halves must be X. Now, let's also uh, go back and write in the 60 degrees here. And 60 degrees here. And I'm going to leave the top um, blank for now. Because at this stage, I, want, I wanted to... Um, show you that we now have two congruent triangles namely the triangle the triangle on the left is congruent to the triangle on the right by side angle side so notice we have this side side AB is congruent to AC we know that angle B is congruent to angle C and we know segment BD is congruent to segment DC. So at this stage we have two congruent triangles and a very important property of congruent triangles is that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and that just means that if angle B corresponds to angle C, they must be congruent. If side AB corresponds to side AC, those must be congruent. And, and as you can tell from the picture, uh, that is indeed the case. Now, um, one, one of the very, uh, one of the most important observations at this stage is that this angle here must be a right angle and this angle must be a right angle and that is the case 
because this angle corresponds to this angle, so they must be congruent. We can tell from the diagram that they're supplementary, and angles that are congruent and supplementary must be equal to 90 degrees, or another way of saying that is they must be right angles. Now that means that this angle up here is 30 degrees, and this angle is 30 degrees. So now you see we have a 30, 60, 90 on the left and a 30, 60, 90 on the right. So now let me, um, let me make some room on the left side. And I just want to focus in on one of those 30, 60, 90s. Because the analysis holds true for, for either side. So let me, let me draw a 30, 60, 90 from the left side of that picture. And let me put the, the labels back in. This is 2x. This is x. And we're going to um, denote the length of the median as b, just a variable b. And as we uh, saw, or as we see on the right-hand side, this angle right here is a 90-degree angle. So let me just put the, um, the angle letters back in so that you can tell that this picture on the left is this triangle right here. Now at this stage um, we don't need we don't need this so let me get rid of it. Oop. Got a little overzealous there. Now at this stage all we need to do is apply the Pythagorean theorem to um, solve for b in terms of in terms of x. Namely, um, we can say that x squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Now, the hypotenuse is 2x, as you can tell from the picture. This is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the longest side in a right triangle and it is always across from the 90 degree angle. Now let's simplify this a little bit. This simplifies to x squared plus b squared equals, now what is 2x quantity squared? Well you square each each piece. So we square the coefficient so that becomes 4 and we square the x so that becomes 4x squared. Now we're going to subtract x squared from both sides. That leaves b squared equals 3x squared. Now if we take the square root of both sides, we find out that b equals root 3 times root x squared. Now let's simplify that a little bit further. So I'm going to rewrite this at the top. We have b b equals root 3 times root x squared. So b equals root 3 times x. And just rearranging those terms, we can say b equals x root 3. OK, so let's put it all together. Let's 
try and neaten this up. Redraw that. It's a little lopsided. We have 90. We have 60. And 30. And what we've derived is that if the shortest side is x, the hypotenuse is 2x, and the side opposite the 60 de degree angle is x root 3. But this is a fairly remarkable and very useful conclusion because now we know that every single 30, 60, 90 triangle that could ever be created must conform to this standard. And we'll um, do some examples in another lesson. In the meantime, please check out my website, www.lfeldman.com, for links to my mobile applications, which cover topics from algebra through calculus. And my apps contain dozens of examples, tutorials, and solvers. And I look forward to speaking with you next time.